You know what was crazy when I did my original top, top 100 films of all time, like five years ago? Around the time, I did not watch any Studio Ghibli movies. Yes, I have not watched Studio Ghibli. I think I watched a couple of their movies, but I never watched all of their movies in full. And, but yet, you know, when COVID hit, obviously, here in 2020, yeah, but obviously when COVID hit in 2020, I decided, oh, oh, I decided to watch all the movies. I also watched the James Bond movies for the first time. At least the ones that aren't Dan Craig ones. ones and, and I watched all the Studio Ghibli ones. Studio, Studio Ghibli. Well, guess what? Some of the movies in the most making this as actually were number 75 going to only yesterday. Which is an incredibly beautiful movie that has some of the most poignant moments you'll ever watch in an anime movie. And I'm saying for B Kiki to lose. So it's one of the most simple, the most one of the most feel-good movies you will ever watch. Like the definition of a comfort movie. Interesting I had this movie much higher on the list, but it's not that any I uh the movie went down for me, it's just my appearance of other movies went up honestly, and number thirty three is the Fablemans. But, but yeah, no Steven Spielberg made this list, of course, and this one being kind of a little bit of bi bi biographical of his life, and you can really feel that passion, like you know Spielberg's like passion for filmmaking and everything and what he has gone through in his life, and you really feel a lot of that emotion with the whole filming aspect, and, and I was gonna feel towards a, again. Yeah, I'm always talking for films that basically have like a choice in the level of filmmaking and what you can really bring to your family and all the troubles it also can bring. And this movie hits all that stuff like a ton of bricks. Like I have big romantic face around, but also I was feeling so much emotion and passion. Like you really feel the passion. You really, really feel it. And now at 72, we get to another anime movie. This one actually not come from Pixar or Studio Ghibli. And it's also one that also came out in 2022. And that is Game of the Toes Pinocchio. Probably, in my opinion, the best Game of the Toe movie on Slay. Like, all his dog game movies, I think a lot of them actually in the Miss Marvel mentions, if I remember correctly. Too bad on the Annie and Kip is coming off the a rewatch series at some point, but. But oh no, this movie just shows his best work on Slay. For, for years, I had three Pinocchio movies, to be honest, two of them were kind of shitty with the Paul Show one, and especially this Live Action one, which I think is the worst season show Live Action remake. This one is by a landslide the best. I mean, obviously it's on this list. It's a movie that, honestly, the more I watch it, the more I connect with the storytelling, the really mature and emotional themes, the incredible music, the outstanding stop motion animation that is just, I remember being so blown away by it when I first watched it, and I still am blown away by it. Just, like, again, you feel so much heart and passion towards it, because I know Game of Thrones 1, it's like I've been a passion project of his for years, if I remember correctly. And you really feel that passion. And, and it's really that also again has good voice acting, has incredibly emotional moments that surprise the hell out of me, moments that still would run through my head, just Oh man. And then from 71 to 76, now I'm looking into dream generally classic movies that I'm guarantee are going to make any like Tower 100 list. And after two of these movies did not actually end up making my list, I think it's almost because I forgot to include them or I didn't know if you we watched them in a while, so but now that I have, and 71, I had, I have John Carpenter's The Thing. I also eventually do plan on watching a lot of the guys film Mafia at some point. But The Thing is a classic, an incredibly tense movie that just delivers on the you know, amazing effects, the great characters. Yeah, just like it's the definition of just pure tense film. Oh, and truly some of the best sequences in any horror movie. Period. Number seven, we get the answer to a film that I totally blanked on, honestly, and that is the original Godfather. His Godfather ended up making this list. Probably the, might, might have been one, if not the best mob movie of all time. It's, uh, like, it still inspired a lot of mob movies, and for good reason, despite being an incredibly long movie, it is still an incredible experience, and it still holds up as surprisingly well, honestly, if I be at least, like, arms in the 70s. And, and of course, he's nine, we got the original Terminator. Oh my god, Terminator's only 69 again. Which wasn't easy, folks. But I still love the original Terminator. It's an incredible movie for a reason. It brought Andre Lincoln to the limelight. I mean, I, limelight has some incredibly scary, intense filled sequences. Sequences, and, and of course, the iconic, I'll be back. It's still ramping in my mind. 
mind the incredible tense sequences, the great character arcs, the incredibly emotional important moments. Moments like again, this movie is it's just incredible. And it's and I don't think no matter how much they try, I don't think Terminator movies are any Terminator series ever going to top these two movies. Like no, no, no. Oh boy, this is probably gonna be the biggest hot take on this list. Honestly, because I mean, if I'm, I mean, I think this is, like this one already. I think I already made the list. I don't know if it actually made the actual list or if it was just close to making the top fifty. But yeah, so seriously, yeah, I got the Force Awakens. Yes, I have the goddamn Force Awakens here. I'm saying because obviously people have gone down this movie ever since. Obviously, you know what happened with Last Jedi vs. Skywalker, and that's totally fair. Like I'm not saying people feel I. So I understand why, and of course there's some of like, oh, I wish this actually had a payoff. And the payoffs we had to dig in my Skywalker were not that great. But, I can still have fun in this movie. I can still have that same great joy that I did when I first watched this in the theater in 2015. Like, I literally adored every single aspect of this movie. It's an incredibly amazing sci-fi movie with incredible action, great interesting characters. While I may be familiar to New Hope, it still delivers so much on the nostalgia and the pure emotion. Mo motion, motion, and it's not like and proves and proves and one they kind of start a whole nostalgia with the Star Wars and them going for it. This one is the instance where I think it's done right. Find out we got incredible action, great tops of the mass space battles in the old Star Wars, and some really interesting characters that you kind of want to be invested in. So yeah, overall, despite the fact that I also last year that in the Force of Airwalker ended up, you know, this movie. And I, I think the last year I would actually end up missing this list, actually. But the Force of Awakens is still one of the best Star Wars movies, in my opinion. Even if I you know what happened. <laughs> but, you know, but yeah, I still love this movie. And now, and now we are back discussing another trilogy on this list. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah, what, what, like I said, I did have some movies that ended up being tied on this list, or I just had to put like a whole trilogy as a whole entry because that way it's worth to be a little more interesting. I mean, I said that because I know I have a lot of people exciting movies coming later, but that's not the point. But as you said, I have the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy from the original 2010 to the second one 2014 and The Hand of World in 2019. Well, the record I was like, How to Dragon 2 is probably my favorite. I still can't deny how incredible the other two ones, so I have to include it as a trilogy. Because all the other ones are still incredible movies. Again, the fact that we had a, that trilogy to end up rivaling Shrek was incredible at the time, honestly. I think I know Companion that came before this, but the film only was as appreciated until after the second movie. But again, it's not a point, but yeah. The original Hunter Training Dragon trilogy is still an incredible series of movies that it's surprising that they end up being as good as it was. Because the first one, for my god, didn't really have the best marketing campaign. And the fact that it ended up being as incredibly emotional poignant as it is, with one of the best relationships in film history with two foots and hiccup, the fact that it ended up being as good as it was, just... Wow. And, and, and the sequel really ramps up the dark tension and the dark moments. Moment times the most emotionally devastating sequences ever. And the hit the world, but, yeah, probably my least favorite, still has some incredible moments and has a beautiful poignant ending. And there's a franchise that actually ends, even though I know we're getting like a remake at some point next year, if I remember correctly. But in terms of this franchise, they actually decided to end it. Which I am happy for. And now we're gonna talk about two Disney movies on this list, with number 66 going to The Emperor's New Groove, which we all can agree is probably the funniest Disney movie of all time, has so many incredible sequences, like the Wildfire sequence that was in my head and Everything involving like Kronk and Yzma and the Ford wall breaks, like, and like through is just pure hilarious from beginning to end. People call it the funniest Disney movie for a reason. And then got the C5 with the original Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Belle's my favorite, and Belle's like Belle's always been my favorite Disney princess, and and, she, and she's an incredible character. In relation with Beast was pretty important and interesting. You know, the ornaments are great, the music is still iconic to this day, like, I'm pretty sure Walsing, like, Beauty and the Beast, so these songs still incredible to this day, and, yeah, easily have one of the best Disney tracks out there, and that ballroom scene is just pure perfection. And now we get to why I played the first Christopher Nolan, it's just because, of course, you can't have, like, a best version of Handel's Rock Clinic, like, some Christopher Nolan's on this list, I think I have a couple of them I own mentions, remember correctly, but, as said before, we have The Prestige! A movie that I've always loved, but I feel it's gotten a lot better for me upon rewatches, and 
It's definitely a very interesting and engaging movie that just really grips you and just never lets go. We got Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale delivering like all time great performances in this movie. Got some incredibly like incredible effects, special effects, incredible magic sequences, and a twist that really makes you rethink what goes on. Like, it basically has all the makings of what you expect from Crystal and Nolan at this point, and I feel it's a film that's just best to watch, not knowing much about it. And it's a film that I get so invested and intensified every single time I watch it. Now, like, then we get to an underrated gen. I feel it's gotten a lot more love recently, but it's a film I've always really enjoyed, and that is F -f 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 50 50 F -f -f 50 50 which... You guys just don't know what 5050 is. It's basically a movie that was in 2011, starring Joseph Girl 11 and Seth Rogen. And it's basically a movie that actually, despite being a comedy, tells a very emotional story about cancer. Yes. Of comedy, that's about cancer. And surprisingly, it's actually very tasteful and doesn't like make fun of that subject, because obviously cancer is a very serious subject. So you need to find a little bit of a Thin line between that, but I think they actually delivered that thin line because I mean, obviously, on this list, so obviously, it is a thin line. Line because I mean, all it manages to be like hilarious and hard, hilarious, having some of the most funny lines I've heard in any comedy. But when it gets to the hard for emotional moments, like that card scene, honestly, like that gets me every time. And Joseph Gillette, like, probably might be still his best performance that he has given. Like, incredible top tier performance in that movie. Like, truly incredible stuff. Incredible. But even if that Rogan gets the best performance as well, we get some pretty hilarious moments from him, but even he can be pretty serious. And you get that to love the encounter for which he got a little bit famous. Famous with he and Jordan delivering actually a very realistic relationship, actually, throughout the movie. Movie that is afraid to get hilarious and when it, it, it's weird that when it's hilarious it actually is hilarious, but when it's serious and emotional, it actually works. Like it's hard to find that. Like sometimes it's pretty hard to find a line between like comedy and drama and emotion. And I think Fitch Pretty is one of those examples that does it pretty well. And now we get to number two. We get to actually another Disney movie on this list, and that is Aladdin, a film I've always loved, a film I've always enjoyed, and. I've always had a special place in my heart for Aladdin. I've loved it so much. And of course, not just about that Ron Williams is genius, one of the best sporting characters ever. His line still hits his very day. But that one, you get a pretty touching story with Aladdin and Jasmine being probably one of the, the, bit of the best couple in any Disney movie, in my opinion. Having great secrets together, having beautiful moments. Like, Whole New World is still probably the best duet that we have gotten from a Disney song that we've gotten, like, in my opinion, at least. Like, very beautiful moments, very sincere moments, incredible action set pieces. There's a lot of great back and forth throughout. Throughout, where one will be hilarious, it's very good, pretty emotional. It has one of the most sweet emotional endings that we have gotten at this new Disney. From a Disney movie! And you also got Jafar Yanko being some of the best villains in any Disney movie, in my opinion. Like, not sure why I actually got put there, but I know they're definitely high up on my favorite Disney villains list. It's just a great adventure movie, which is a lot of heart and charm. And now in 60, 61, we get to the movie that I think is actually the best sports film of all time, and that's Rocky. First off, it pains me that I put it on number 61 on this list, and two, I don't think I need to say more about Rocky. Like, what can I say Brian has already been said? It's the best sports movie for a reason. And now in 60, we get to what I think is probably my favorite Martin Scorsese movie, is a yeah, it is probably the last most famous movie and my favorite of his. This one's always been my favorite, honestly, and it's iconic one that I don't need to say more. Taxi Driver. Like, I've always loved Taxi Driver, but I don't think I forgot how much I appreciated and loved it till I, I did my till I rewatched all his movies last time. I, I watched all his movies last year, and like man, it was an incredible experience and a movie that still represents an iconic to this very day. Like that theater scene and that ending, just they still give me every time. And now we go to another MCU movie, and that is Captain America Civil War. Yeah, people have that person in 59, but Civil War I think is still an incredible movie. And I, I remember I watched the movie constantly when it came out. I remember the movie was so, f like, I mean, I, I watched it over and over and over again when it came out. The movie, I still think it's still one of, obviously, one of the best MCU movies. I mean, it's obviously on this list, but, yeah. I, I, I think a lot of people definitely had a lot 
issues with the movies nowadays, most certainly with the size between Captain America and Iron Man. It's like, oh, none of them on the right, and I don't understand the reasoning. So, I think that's why the reason is actually very perfectly in this movie. The movie where you can see why Iron Man Tony Stark would think that it's the right way, and why Captain America thinks the right way, and it makes their back and forth in the eventual Civil War actually manageable and actually, you know, reasonable. I always said, this is this movie that, that this is basically the movie that Batman Superman Don Justice should have been because it has a lot of the same themes and a lot of the same aspects. Probably why those movies are comparable. Right now, y'all got the Zemo, who I think for the longest time before Dance was probably my favorite villain, honestly, which you know, is pretty impressive. And impressive how he's able to actually tear, you know, what had he do with the Avengers. And you also get two of the best action set pieces in the MCU with the airport sequence and the Cap Tony and Cap versus Tony and Captain Buck vs. Tony sequence that still hits like a ton of bricks. The scene, the scene, and of course they introduced Black Panther and Spider Man, and, and they're integrating incredibly well into this movie as well, with some great moments as well. Which shows a lot of tension with their moods and their characters. Also, Chad Bowman, may he rest in peace. Best of War, I still love. It's still one of the best MCU movies, definitely the top five. It's very weird to talk about this movie nowadays because, well, that's more the after itself, but I'm going to talk about Harry Potter on this list because there are two Harry Potter movies that did end up making this list. One will be a little bit later on this list, spoilers. But next one I'm going to talk about is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which, aside from the number we're talking about, is usually talked about as the best Harry Potter movie, and it's not hard to see why. First off, it has these the best cinematography of any Harry Potter movies because Avalos Akron is an incredible cinematographer. These movies, I make the movie look and direct it, are just incredible. You get some of the most pure emotion out of these moments, with every moment in series black and everything. You get some incredible action set pieces, an incredible finale. You know, a, a pre, some alternate great moments, especially with Hermione Punchy Draco. Some great magic moments, some great emotional moments, some great acting moments throughout. And it's kind of starts to have the dark tone of the films that I'm going for in later movies because while the first two movies were there, I still love, of course, they're more kid-friendly type of movies. This one was kind of more setting that tone that the later movies go for. And Red Alice Band is still one of the best for a damn reason. And now at number 7, we get to another superhero movie on this list again. A lot of superhero movies, but yeah. Number 7, we have The Batman. The Wild Pants and Batman. Yes, this movie ended up making my best of all time list. I never debate when I where I wanted to put Batman honestly. Like it was definitely was up near where I wanted to put this movie. But I decided to put it in this spot. So, because again, the Batman is an incredible movie. Like it delivers what people really wanted from Batman for a while now. Like it has some of the best elements uh, Batman has put on screen, like uh, Rob Pants delivering an all time great Batman performance and you know Bruce Wayne as well. <laughs> this is a prime example of, of this is almost perfect, the prime example, and hey, you can't have multiple villains in the Superman movie, it just make sure they're balanced properly. I mean, hell, you got freaking the Penguin with the unbelievable performance of Colin Farrell, you got Catwoman with Zoe Frank, my opinion, living the best Catwoman that we have gotten, and Paul Dano just knocking out of the part as the Riddler, delivering a more sinister version of the character, but I like that version of the character, honestly. I like the fact that they did a more sinister version instead of the more like, goofy version that he's known for. Again, it's a different take on the character, which I really enjoyed. And the mystery is great, it's probably different very, very long, it doesn't feel long, honestly, because of the pacing. Gotham is the most realized it's ever been on screen. I think any of the previous movies haven't done Gotham very well on screen, but this one definitely makes you feel like, oh, this is a bad place. Yeesh. 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 Yikes. Right now, you also get some great action set pieces as well. You get some great war buildings, a great story potential, and you also get the great from Jeff Redfield and great as Christian Gorton, and you get some great performances and a great vibe, and just what you expect from Batman just in a more dark place, and it delivers. And it makes me incredibly excited to see whenever they're going to get part two, and how they're going to tune this with the whole. whole of course, how they're going to change with the Penguin Shop, but that's kind of just if I remember correctly. But yeah, I'm definitely excited to experience more of this world. Thank God, just thank God James Gunn is still continuing this, thank God. Or, thank God they're still continuing this, thank God. 
And now we're going to get to a t next tie for this segment, and we're talking about two Christmas movies. Yeah, we're talking about some Christmas movies. We want to barely be my favorite movie, be my favorite Christmas movie on time, but one I decided to put, since there's no Christmas movie I decided to also put it on time to slip, and that is Elf and Home Alone. Two of the most iconic Christmas movies of all time, and for good reason. Like, I don't even talk about how great these movies are, because Elf's always been a movie that I loved and enjoyed growing up, it's a movie that still brings me a lot of smiles to this very day. Still, my opinion, has one of Phil's best performance. Well, a very, very charming character, a very charming moments, just a film that's filled so much heart and just brings you into a Christmas spirit. And they got Home Alone, which is an iconic movie still for a freaking reason, with the vibes and the kid made them out new these master deeds, which is pretty hilarious. How yeah, I was able to actually outsmart them, but basically some pretty hilarious moments. Just to finish the movies that really bring you into the Christmas spirit. There's something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters! Ghostbusters! Mm. Yeah, I forgot how great the original Ghostbusters until I rewatched it earlier this year with Brave Frozen Empire coming out this year. I rewatched all the films and I forgot how great the original is. Still one of the best comes of all time. Still one of the best themes of all time. Still one of the best group of characters of all time. I believe between 40s here is just like. Why does <laughs> number 54 I have Jaws, the film that basically brought the summer blockbuster to life. I'm still stunned, that's why I'm talking like this, but Jaws is still incredible. Of course, I had to put Jaws somewhere in this list, sitting in still the Dylan Seals film movie you'll see on this list. Incredible still film that's still very testified and still delivers the great thrills and the characters to this very day. There's a reason why this film is the summer blockbusters. <laughs> okay, I'm good. And now I'm number 53 and 52 against two movies that I don't think I need much introduction because I don't think there's really much to talk about because they are iconic movies for a reason. With 53 being, being Christopher Nolan's magnum opus Inception, which is one of the most like, freaky and insane and just mind bending films of all time. The reason why people still talk about this and why films still reference and the film is still influenced by a lot of movies to this very day. And for the two, I'm going to a movie that I'm not going to talk about because they said to never talk about it. So I'm just going to both right here and say it's amazing. My very day fiction movie, I Love Pie Club. Oh, I talked about that! And now we're getting to a movie that just missed out on the actual top 50, which is fortunate, but you know, that's where I go when we try to make a best on time list. But yeah. After the one, we got the original Scream, the film that basically changed horror movies for the good and the better. And I absolutely love Scream. I think it is an incredible movie. I, again, Scream, my first of all, no, Scream is actually my favorite horror franchise of all time, and I pretty much love all the movies in, the, in this series, honestly, even the third one, even the recent ones. Well, and the original is still, in my opinion, still the best, honestly. And honestly, like, it still delivers the great scares, the great thrills, like, it delivers. Way back from this type of genre, and while well, of course poking fun about the horror trust, which I think do pretty effectively here, still has probably in the Bailey the, one of the best horror openings in any horror movie period. Like honestly, probably the best opening period in any horror movie. Like again, that's still in the bait, but it's definitely up there. Like it's an incredible horror movie for a reason. I don't think I need to say anymore.